we begin with the ohms, and I always tell you that it's about um, uniting us together. Remember that when we unite, it doesn't mean that um, that somebody sticks out more than somebody else. Every flavor shows up, you know? So if you think of like a pot of soup and you, you're, you've got all these wonderful warm spices in it and thinking that because it's autumn, right? And the broth and, and everything that's there, everything works together. Nothing is going to overpower anything else. And if you eat slow enough, you can identify all the different spices that are there. So I say that so that you know that unity means that we all keep who we are, but we come together collectively to make something even bigger and better. And today we're doing that through doing our three ohms so that we can begin to unite from the very beginning. So kindly ohm with me, please. Oh. Oh. It always feels so lovely to find that sweet spot of calmness and peacefulness that we can begin from. And even like how we can learn from oming is about to have faith in ourselves, which of course this week we're learning a lot of, or this month, <laughs> we're learning a lot, or last month, <laughs> I got to get into my time frame, don't I? Um, we've been learning a lot about faith. And it's, faith isn't really a word that I think a lot of people use. Certainly it's used in terms of um, religious studies. And um, not that spiritual studies are separate from religious studies, but we're not going to really talk about religion today as much, about, as much as it's about spiritual studies. And when we have faith in ourself, one of the things that happens is we begin to appreciate all the different parts of ourself. You know, because sometimes you can be, well, I like this about me or I like that about me, but I don't like this about me. And this is really awful and this needs improvement. So we kind of separate ourselves, even just like thinking about that, rather than seeing that all of our parts, our body parts, as well as our mind parts, our emotion parts, that all of them are that pot of soup that I was talking about. They all work together. And we've talked about how every thought that we think affects our body because it does, you know, um, we can say, oh gosh, I got a headache. And someone can say, well, yes, you've been working too hard or you're stressed or that sort of thing. And we know that's true, but yet we don't think about that. My thoughts and my body are in perfect relationship with one another. So we treat the body part, but not the stress part, <laughs> not the thought part. <laughs> so then that keeps continuing and we keep having stress and we keep having problems in our tummy or wherever it is that you hold it. It can uh, manifest in your muscles and everywhere else, actually. So what I'm saying is, is that when we have faith in ourselves, we begin to realize that, yes, we can see our body, we can see other people's bodies, and that's evidence that we have a living being in front of us. But if we lived in another dimension and we didn't have these bodies, we would be able to see one another's minds much more clearly. But we don't. We live here, and that's that's one of the tasks that we have to do, is to learn to be able to see our thoughts. What are we thinking today? What's going on inside of us? Seeing your thoughts is listening to your voice, listening to what you're saying. When you're in conversation, listen to yourself. You're listening to the other person, but sometimes we speak without listening to ourselves. We don't. Sometimes we don't. You know, when we say, and it just flew out of my mouth. <laughs> well, that's because it's been there. That's because it's been there for quite some time. And um, thoughts that have been with us for a while, they have this uh, tendency 
to get bigger and bigger and they become more prominent um, inside of us. So it's important that we take the time to listen to our own thoughts. So as having a conversation with someone to listen to your own thoughts doesn't mean you're thinking. It means you're being quiet enough to experience your side of the conversation. So if I'm having a disagreement with one of you <laughs> and you're t -t 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 at me and I'm t -t 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 at you, it's very difficult to suddenly become aware. Oh my gosh, I'm flying off the handle. Well, it is. It's very hard to understand how to do that. But once you start to um, experience listening to yourself as you're speaking, everything will slow down. And as you slow down, you might not want to slow down because it kind of gives a space for another person to say whatever they're going to say. Well, okay, if they're going to be um, a torrent of uh, bad words to you, know that it's time for you just to say, okay, you know, maybe I need to walk away and come back to this conversation later. Do you know how much strength what I just said that takes? I do. And so when I say it to you, I say it knowingly that this takes practice that this isn't something that we're just going to jump into. So really what I'm trying to do is to help us to become more aware of it because from awareness, then we establish a practice of faith in ourselves. because quite honestly, sometimes when we're in a disagreement with someone, we have to keep doing this volley back and forth, back and forth because we want to win. And of course they're saying the same thing. I want to win this conversation. I can't have her have the last word or, you know, she said this to me. So now I have to step it up, step it up. It's really step it down. Because when you retaliate, it's not a step up. It's a step down. But we amplify. We get bigger. Everything gets bigger. Our voice gets bigger. Our anger gets bigger. Everything gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you can't hear yourself at all. Because you're so busy wanting to retaliate. So what happens is we lose faith in ourselves. So we can't walk away. When you have faith in yourself, you have more understanding of your inner strength, that you don't have to stand there and be brutalized. You don't have to stand there and be uh, told how bad you are. You really don't. You can, you can, again, through practice, you can say, no, thank you. And we can walk away. Very difficult. Only because the practice isn't there. It isn't difficult because the process is difficult, but it requires a practice. We have a practice of staying there and punching one another with our words, you know? And it's like when people say to me, well, the person didn't hit me. <laughs> Sounds to me like you got hit. Every time very bad words, bad thoughts, bad sentences come into our field, you are hit. You've taken a hit. And when you retaliate, they've taken a hit. So we're constantly going back. And where do you think the concept of war came from? We amplify one-on-one -on -one conversations to a point to where we're literally shooting bullets at one another with our words. And then we get into a group. And this group now is going to do the same thing to the other group. Now we just don't even bother with just our words because why? We can build bombs and we can shoot them at the other person or whatever it may be. All of these things come from how we are as individuals without guns, without cannons, without all of this. It all started with one individual to another individual and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And it just escalates and escalates. And now we're in a time of technology where we don't even have to face each other. We can shoot this bomb all the way across the world. We don't have to listen anymore to what anybody's saying. Because we don't listen to our own voice. It all starts with in here. When we have faith in ourselves, we're more likely to have peace within. And remember that peace is not neutrality. It's a whole different concept. Peace is not neutrality. It is inner strength. It is inner strength. It builds up inside of you and creates this interesting tolerance 
to negativity. The more that you practice uh, faith in yourself and you practice peace, you build up a tolerance where there's hate, where there's mistrust, where there's bad words spoken to you, where people speak down to you. When you practice faith in yourself, you practice peace, you become strong. You, be, you become strong like, like people who don't get viruses are strong. They have a strong immune system. We're looking to build an immune system in our etheric body. The part of us that lives inside the physical body. And as we get stronger, we're able to bear things and they don't come in so deeply. Because when people say really bad things to us, they get in, they can get in really deeply. And you can walk across, away from the uh, conversation, very upset, of course, because it's very aggravating and you're full of fire. You see fire, bullets, fire. And it takes time to cool, cool down. And even after you've cooled down, two days later, three days later, four days later, the conversation is still repeating itself in your mind. Five months later, two years later. See what I'm saying? So I'm saying this because our saboteur this past month has been the word betrayal. This is how we betray ourselves. what I've been saying. But you see, it's unconscious betrayal. So what I'm talking about is to help us to become more conscious of how we betray ourselves, which makes us completely vulnerable to being betrayed by others because they betrayed themselves and they have no practice whatsoever. They don't have any faith in themselves or they wouldn't do to you what they're doing to themselves. People who are always angry, well, quite often, I should say, and people who generate anger in others, they don't have faith in themselves. They have no idea what they're doing to themselves later in this life or in their future lives. They don't know. Public figures who are this way, they have no idea that, yes, everything catches up to us. Not to punish us. Not at all. It's just that the nature of the universe is we create here, it moves out, it affects the world, and it returns back to us. You think about pollution. Pollution is generated from people's thoughts. It is. Factories, cars, you know, we build all those things from our thoughts. And then it moves out, it affects the world, and then it moves back to us. And suddenly we're sick from that too. That's karma, cause and effect. No reward, no punishment. Mm -mm. We betray ourselves by not being there for ourselves. I'm kind of hoping and wishing that everybody else is going to be there for us, though. <laughs> I'm going way out of our way to get people to be there for ourselves. And then we get so angry when, when we feel like somebody's not there for me. But you have you, and that's the last person you're looking towards to help you. Always looking for answers from other people. Always looking for comfort from others. I'm not saying that's a bad thing comfort and answers from others all i'm saying is is that it's very important that you carry you you're in this body 24 7 you're available for a consult call yourself up <laughs> have a chit chat with yourself what's going on hey you're okay it's all right it's all right and to help yourself to to be soothed, to be comforted, to practice a chant or <clears throat> a mantra, affirmations that are very spiritual. So a very spiritual affirmation, it can be the way you say it rather than exactly what you're saying. Of course, you want to say as high words as you can possibly have, but you could say something like this. <clears throat> God is peace. I am peace. Now you can say it like this. Oh, God is peace. Now, where did I put my keys? Oh, yeah, yeah. I am peace. <laughs> it 
So I'm exaggerating, of course, so that you can see it. But what you want to do is you want to like, like when we do the ohms, it clears the energy of the world from us for a moment. So when you sit down to do a practice, you know, to help yourself to chant, and you can do three ohms. Maybe you're in the car and you, you get to your destination and you stop. But you know that when you go into that building, you're going to have a bit of a disagreement. You already know that there's two sides to the story that's about to be expressed when you go into this building. If you sit in your car for a few moments, you can own. Maybe you can't. Okay. So own very quietly. You don't have to have the loudest ohm in the room. I'll show you. Om. God is peace. I am peace. God is peace. I am peace. God is peace and I am peace. Sometimes when you chant or you do a mantra or you do affirmations or you do prayers, <clears throat> say them so softly that it takes effort takes effort to control your voice to be soft. And that softness moves all the way through you. Because if you're sitting in your car and you know you're going to go in and you're like, okay, God is peace, I am peace, right? Right? I'm doing my chanting. God is peace, I am peace, right? Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness gracious. I mean, I'm sure that that can help on some level, but let's go for the full-blown experience. And really bring it, bring it in and say it, say it with love. Say it with love, because when you say it with love, it comes from inside of you and it's reverberating inside of you. Love, love is reverberating inside of you. When you say mantras and chants and prayers with love, it's reverberating. It's moving through every cell of your body. It's moving for you, through your voice box, through your eyes. And it moves out from you, out into the atmosphere wherever you go. And then when you're walking towards the building, you can continue it. Because there's all these people around you and you know, and you want to just be, keep this very private. And so you can continue and you can just say it with your lips. And then when you get into the elevator, you can say it to yourself. So by the time you get to see this person, you've been chanting with such self-control that when the conversation happens, sure enough, here comes the attack. But you're filled with the vibration of love. And it gives you the ability to have faith in yourself because you've already come to your rescue before anything has even happened. And so you have the inner strength to not participate. And the other person will feel that, what is that about you today? I feel something. I feel something. They won't know it's love because in that moment, they're not consciously aware that they're made up of love and so are you. No awareness whatsoever, even though it's the truth. So we have to keep remembering about love. So love for the self is love for God. Love for God is love for the self. Remember that when we talk about this little three-letter word, God, it is the infinite. It's so big that we can't even imagine it. That's why I've told you before, like the yogis say, if we were all cows, we would imagine God being looking like a cow. So we say God looks like us, which is interesting because what does God look like? Everything. <laughs> God looks like the sun. God looks like every human being. God looks like lizards. <laughs> God's are, God looks like the solar system. God looks like the deepest, darkest space where you can't see your 
your hands in front of your face. Right? But you see, as we practice it from the inside out, then we remember, oh, yes, of course. It's always in me, moving through me and around me and above me and underneath my feet and everywhere I sit and everything. And then the, the, the concept of eternity becomes more um, close, more personal. It's right here. And this beingness that we call God so I struggle with words with it because I don't want to limit it. But every time, it's like in the Tao, they say the minute that you speak it, it's no longer the Tao because it limits everything. So the minute you, you start to speak of God, it limits everything because we're starting to put it into a container so that where we are currently, we can comprehend it, which is why we have all these pictures of what God is and where people are actually shouting at us. This is what God is. This is what God looks like. Oh, you just smile at them and let them have their own thoughts, please. But remember that you, you understand that this force moves through everyone at all times. But it's invisible until you can see it in somebody's eyes. You can hear it through their words. You can see it through their actions. You see, you experience God and other people in that way. When we're good to each other, we are good to each other. <laughs> and we make things happen. When we're bad, well, we're completely forgetful. We have no memory of the divine. And yet, a little spark is there. You know why I tell you this? Because even when people are doing bad things, they want to be seen. Well, you say, well, that has nothing to do with God. Oh, but it does. It's this awareness of light. We're always looking for light. Because we all live in the darkness. Darkness is not bad. Please don't get me wrong when you hear me say the word darkness. You have a shadow. Because the light isn't occupying, the light is not occupying that space. So you have a shadow. And that shadow goes everywhere with you. But the light is not occupying that space. That's darkness. So in our minds, the places that make us think bad thoughts about ourselves and and do things to others, it's like a shadow inside of our mind, inside of our heart. And so we look at others and we may see the light in them and we want to take it from them. When we're experiencing jealousy, we steal from other people. We can steal their moment. We can steal their money. We can steal um, their whatever it is in that moment because we see their light and we want that light because we're living too much in the shadow world. Or we're not really feeling the light. We're not being warmed by our own heart. We're living too much in our head thinking that I'm right, damn it, and I'm going to prove it to the world. I'm right. You see how I jaw clenching? <laughs> so when you're by yourself and you're thinking these thoughts, your entire body is invaded by that. So again, if you're in your car going to this office, or this house, or wherever you're going to meet this person, your body is already completely tight if you haven't come to your own rescue. You're in a place where when you clamp down on yourself like that, you are unconsciously keeping the light from spreading inside of you. And if you can become aware of it and open up, you will start to shine. But like this, your shoulders all the way up here, your jaws clenched and your fists are clenched and all of these things. No, you will not feel the light, but you will want it. You will want it. So faith in ourself 
is what I'm always going to say to you a thousand times. Faith in ourself is faith in God. Faith in God is faith in ourself. And the more that we have this faith in ourself, I'm telling you, you won't fly off the handle. You won't wish other people ill will. And all of us have done this. Every single human being on the planet. Moi? <laughs> all of us is like, well, I hope that they get it too. <laughs> well, they will. And so will you. And it'll keep going. And that pain will keep happening. And we'll wonder why it's always me. <laughs> why? Why me? <laughs> Until we start to see how much practice it takes to be steady within ourselves. And I hope when I say these things to you that you don't, you don't feel guilty, you don't feel bad about yourself and think, gosh, I, I am doing that. No, just have awareness. Have awareness. And remember that everything you do, you want to do it with intention. And intention, usually when you hear this word intention, people say, I'm setting intentions. It's usually about money. You know, <laughs> setting intentions to make X amount of dollars or have this new job. Bravo. Okay. But if you don't set intentions on how you want to be inside, no matter how much money that you have, you're still going to be the same person who's lost as you are now. So we set intentions in this way. Whatever it is that you're saying, know that it's powerful. Know that it affects the people around you. Know that it will return to you. Set the intention today. Like today, you can say, okay, since our word has been faith, we'll use that word. Today, I'm setting an intention to have more faith in myself, in my thoughts, in my words, and in my actions. And as you do that, you keep coming back to yourself, having faith in yourself that you got this, that you do have strength, that you can bear things without retaliation, that you're there for you. It's an important practice. And the work is never done. <laughs> this is a practice for the rest of your life and into your next life. And don't think that when you're in the other world that you're not working, because you are. This practice of spirituality doesn't stop because we lose our body and we're in the other world and we don't have a physical body. You don't need one when you're in the other world. Those worlds are built of light. You're in your light body, but you're still you. You're still working. Spiritual work never stops. With a body, without a body, you're still working. <laughs> Till when? I don't know. <laughs> All I know is that eventually become enlightened. I wish I could tell you, well, this is what enlightenment really feels like. And this is what an enlightened person does. We have ideas about it, right? We have ideas. But it's like the word God. We have ideas. But we're still learning. We're still learning. So one of the most difficult um, things to overcome is the word betrayal. Whew. I mean, it's a really, really hard word. And we've all felt betrayed. And I'm sure we could come up with someone in our life who feels betrayed by us. It's a feeling of... Um, Sometimes it's like it's a feeling of you didn't see it coming. And you get whacked in the head with it. You're like, what? You, you're, you, you've been doing what? It makes you spin when you get news like this. That you suddenly realize that you've been betrayed. betrayed. It could be in a personal relationship. It could be with something that you bought like a house you find out oh my gosh it's really not mine this happened there's betrayal on every level and when you feel it and when the first moment that you understand that this has happened to you 
it's it can feel like 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 someone's punched you in the face or the air goes out of you it can there's so many ways that you feel it and that's only the beginning because betrayal has a way of working inside of us to the point to where we can really become full of hate because we feel like it's our right. Well, you hear this one this one thing a lot in life. I have a right to be angry. And you know my response to that is you have a right to be peaceful. <laughs> you have every right to be strong and kind. You have every right to be peaceful. Of course you have a right to be angry. Why would you be defensive about it? You already are that in that moment. Because you know it's not healthy for you, for the environment, or for anyone else. But at that moment, you don't have self-control. And when we don't have self-control, it's because we don't have faith in ourselves. We lose control because we lack faith in ourselves. The more faith that we have in ourselves, the more self-control that we have in any situation, overcoming our own bad habits, being able to stand strong in the face of adversity, or when we get that news that we've been betrayed. And as you're healing from betrayal and you practice spirituality, you will know this is coming from some other space and time. I put this energy out somewhere and it's returned back to me. Now, I'm very careful when I say this because there are people who suffer great violence against them. And I don't want to make everything kind of seem like, well, yes, yeah, see, they've done this and it's come back to them. Because it, it immediately, <clears throat> when people hear me say that, sometimes people feel like she's saying I deserve that or I'm being punished. You'll never hear me use the word deserve when we talk about karma. No. Or punished. Never. Nobody deserves to be hurt, to be harmed. Nobody does no matter what's happened. And yet, it's on, it happens every day to one person at a time, to millions of people at a time. We must be very, very generous in our compassion and understanding to people who have really been harmed when we learn about these spiritual um, acts called karma. Nobody deserves to be harmed. It's just that we live in a world right now where harm certainly is on the rise on a global scale. And it's very important that we help ourselves to not get involved wish, wish, with wishing harm upon others because we don't agree with them, because we think they're stupid, because we think they're dangerous. Well, then we become dangerous too. We've joined their club without even knowing it because now we're wishing it on them. We must be strong and kind. Strong. Kindness takes strength. Anybody can condemn other people. Anyone can lie to another human being. Anyone can mislead and hate. No intelligence is required whatsoever. It takes intelligence, spiritual intelligence. It takes practice and work and commitment to have faith in yourself so that you reduce the harm from you out to others and the harm to yourself by living in, in this terrible, trashy world of lies and exploitation. We have to grow into spirituality. It's present with us. The seed is there. We're born with the seed. Because the divine lives everywhere. But we have to plant that seed of intention. The intention to be better. <laughs> to love more deeply. You will not become wimpy. Love is not wimpy. Why would we all want it so much? 
Why would we want to see it everywhere? Right? There's nothing wimpy about love. Forgiveness, understanding, generosity, feeding people who are hungry, helping people find homes, praying for people when there's disasters. This takes strength. You could read it in the news and just go, huh, walk away. It just is. I'm not saying that's bad. All I'm saying is we can do better. When you see something that has disaster in it, you could send them love. So if you're on your phone, that's why I'm doing this. This is my phone today. <laughs> so if you're looking on your phone and you see disaster and you feel in your heart, oh my gosh, those people. Send them love. Send them love. You see why I say it takes um, inner strength? Because we have to remember. We have to remember that this is who we have always been. But we've forgotten because we're not seeing it mirrored to us. We're not seeing it in, in, in uh, leaders of churches as much as perhaps we would like to. We're not seeing it in leaders of the world perhaps as much as we like to. We're not seeing it in the educational system as much as we would like to. Okay, so it's not there in a broad spectrum. So you don't want to be forgetful too. If that's the example that's set, you don't have to follow it. And you follow it every time that you put them down. <laughs> without knowing, of course. Without knowing. But once we become conscious of it, then we try to help ourselves. It won't be perfect. It won't be like every day you're like, ah, peace, love. It won't be like that every day until you've been doing it perhaps for 50 lifetimes. I don't know how long it takes for it to really resonate every moment of every day. But what I'm saying is, is that as you adapt to practice, you start to feel better. You start to feel better you start to feel more faith in yourself that you will overcome. That this too will pass. But the more we let it gnaw on us, mm, that day will be longer away from us that we overcome. And here you have a family or you, you have uh, pets. You have your life and you're missing out because... You are caught in the darkness of stewing in your mind. Because when you're in here, you can't enjoy your family as much as you would like to. You can't enjoy um, a, a hug from your dog or cat as much as you would like to. You can't enjoy the beauty of looking out your window and going, Oh my goodness gracious, look at that tree. <laughs> Ruby snickering because, you know, <laughs> she's young. It takes a while to really appreciate botany. <laughs> when you're older, it's like, oh, my God, look at the trees. <laughs> I love that flower. <laughs> but um, so what I'm saying, too, is um, the practice grows. The practice grows and you have more joy. And you won't betray yourself so much. And by the way, the more we have a practice, a spiritual practice, so maybe like way back when I'm talking about some deeds that I have no recollection of because they happened in other lifetimes, but they're still with me. They're still in the seeds. Negative things. I'm talking negative things right now. But you see, if I have a practice in this lifetime and I have the intention to really do good, to think good, to speak good, to do good, and I follow through on those intentions, maybe not 100%, but I follow through, and I go back to it when I fall off, it will negate some of that karma from before. Because it overrides it. Because karma like that that's intentionally about love and producing love has the power to illuminate 
the darkness from some other time and some other space. Amazing, right? Amazing. The more we understand karma and reincarnation as laws of nature, not as theory, <laughs> it's so profound it takes lifetimes to really understand. But when we start to just understand it in the sense of goodness is light and badness is dark. So when you're thinking these thoughts because you've been betrayed and you're thinking them and you're dwelling in them and you're living in them, be careful because you could get stuck. You could get stuck. And it could stay with you. And the more you're stuck in there, your life out here begins to diminish because you can't be present because you're so overwhelmed as being stuck. And we've all had situations that can do that. Grief, oh my gosh, grief can get a hold of a person so much that they can't find their way out. But the practice of light, light moving through you, helps so that the darkness dissipates and you live in light and when you live in light you get more um, access to mm, new ideas new ways to overcome new ways to help yourself and to help others you become stronger and i hope that's tempting <laughs> you know chocolate is pretty tempting i must say <laughs> And I certainly have to give it attention. <laughs> so now we want to feel that way, of course, about the intention to create love within and outside of us also. To have a sense more of it's okay to give because sometimes people are like, it's not okay. I see people that are like, no, I'm not giving to those people. Why don't they get a job? Uh, mental illness? Darkness. That's a dark thought. When you project a dark thought onto a person who's suffering, that's a dark thought. But when you see them and you're like, oh my gosh. And you say a quick, I wish you love. I pray for love for you today. Whatever it may be. That's light. And you're putting light into the world. And our world right now, all over, is, it's in some serious darkness. But it's nothing we can't overcome. We're not to that point to where it all goes dark. <laughs> no. And I say, as of yet, because of course it could, but you see, I'm not worried about it. Because remember that old corny thing um, about which uh, it is corny, but it's not corny at all. It's the truth. You know, if all the candles went out in the world, and except for one, you could bring all the light back again. So each individual is a very strong candle. And everywhere that you go, if you carry the light, in other words, you carry awareness of light emanating from you, everywhere you go, that candle, that lit candle goes. And wherever there's darkness, people are in that light. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. We can actually like inspire someone by standing next to them in the supermarket if you're chanting about God and love they won't know it you won't even know you're doing it because you're actually doing the intention for love not just to, to, as an experiment to see somebody look at you because you're doing it no this is between you and the divine that lives inside of you outside of you lives in the people over here and over there lives in every circumstance and every situation so we might just be, um, you know, a slice of carrot in the soup. But every carrot matters. <laughs> every green bean matters. <laughs> every everything matters. Even every little, every little 
a sprinkle of paprika. <laughs> if you're only a sprinkle of paprika, it matters. It matters, it contributes to the soup. So if I really think a lot of very dark thoughts, very bad thoughts, thoughts where I'm going to like show people in a really negative way just how powerfully negative I am, well, that's when you use salt instead of sugar when you're baking. Changes the recipe very bad. Can't eat it. So you see what I'm saying? Watch your recipe. What do you want in your recipe and who you are? And I say that so that you stay an individual. Like snowflakes. Everyone is unique. But you can't really see individualism when they're all laying on top of each other. But they still are individuals. Absolutely. And that's what we want to do, is be who we are. We want to learn from each other. We want to give to one another. Absolutely. It's very important. And our country, um, well, we have a lot of ingredients in terms of all the different kinds of people that live here. Right? So many different people from all over the world live here in our country. We've got a soup that is completely unique. <laughs> we do, you know, and we're so young. You know, we're not like as old as China and India or Russia. I mean, these countries are thousands of years old. Here we are, baby 243 years old. Here we are, hello. And we have all of these ingredients. We are a complex flavor. <laughs> You know, we have chili peppers and we have sugar and we have every flavor in between. We have everything here. But we have, because we're so diverse, we have to learn to blend with one another so that the paprika can be come through, the nutmeg can come through, right? All the unique flavors are all there. And when we slow it down and we begin to see that, then we become this flavorful soup that we can all eat from and share it with the world. Hey, come taste us. Right now, if they taste it, it's going to be like, oh, too much of that or not enough of that <laughs> because we're not making room for all the flavors to blend. So we have to like help ourselves to make room for all the flavors to blend. Blending is not enmeshment. Mm -mm. It makes room for every flavor to shine, every human to shine. And it helps us to be better to animals, not only humans. Animals are really having a hard time. Climate change does not only affect human beings, it affects the animals, the birds. They're all, they're all going through it. There are birds who are losing, um, losing their way in the air when they never did before. There are types of trees that can't grow like they used to. Animals all over the world are suffering. They too are part of our soup. If something happens to them, we need to not be naive and think that we will be able to live without them. Our world, the way that we know our world, no, we won't know the world without them, not the way that we do. All the work that they do, this animal is in relationship to this plant and that plant is in relationship to that animal and that's in relationship to this and everything's in relationship. If we lost bees, you realize we would lose so much food. Yeah, who knew? Bees. If we lose them, it's detrimental to the life that we know today. So I say that so that you remember, yes, be good to humans. And always remember the animals in your prayers and the little bees and, you know, all the animals that we think are ugly and awful and reptiles and you're like, oh. 
Help yourself to make peace with them and send them love too. Every species is important. They're not here for our enjoyment, just for tourism. No. No. They're part of our soup. So we want to help ourselves to remember balance. We don't want to get sucked down the drain in darkness and get, get just get covered in goo and forget who we are and forget who other people are. Come to your own rescue. Come to your own rescue. It will make you feel better because if if you don't come to your own rescue, you are at the mercy of other people and sometimes it doesn't come. Sometimes compassion from other people don't come. Sometimes mercy doesn't come to you in your situation. Sometimes it doesn't come. But if you've forgotten you, then you are in serious trouble. Come to your own rescue first and foremost. Make it a practice every day. Help yourself to feel strong and kind every day. No betrayal here. Help ourselves. It's not easy. I, I want to keep making that perfectly clear. Everything that I'm saying to you requires practice. It requires intention. It requires commitment. And when you fall off and you start to feel bad and you think, oh my gosh, I don't feel like I did when I was on that path, get the hell back on it immediately, if not faster. <laughs> right? <laughs> Come to your own rescue. You will fall off. I fall off. You fall off. We fall off. And we'll do it again and again and again in varying degrees. Get back on it. Get back on it. Never think to yourself, oh, see, I got off it. Or don't say to yourself, oh, that doesn't work because I still feel bad. Well, hello. It's not an antibiotic. You're not going to feel it right away. <laughs> You'll feel a little bit and a little bit. And after a while, you're going to want it more than you want chocolate. And that's saying something. <laughs> so it's important. These things are very important to really want to have peace. So for our uh, for the month of um, October, I've been giving you little hints about our word. <laughs> so you could ponder on it, you know, when I tell it to you. But um, our word for October is unity. And the saboteur of, the, for, there can be many saboteurs to unity. Let's get real. <laughs> but uh, for October, the saboteur is enmeshment. Because sometimes people don't want to be united with people who have a different viewpoint because they're afraid they just have to go along with the other people and be all enmeshed. And they'll lose their importance or their individuality. Their flavor will get over, uh, will just disappear. You won't be able to taste that little hint of nutmeg in there. But with unity, ah, you'll remember nutmeg. You'll remember it because you could taste it. But when we're enmeshed, no, we can't taste it. No, the strong flavors, well, they, they just have to go away. <laughs> so unity. And um, I purposefully thought about this word because we also have a big election coming up and it's really important that we put our thoughts our um, intentions on unity through peace unity through peace let us chant on our own Peace, unity through peace, unity through peace, right? We need all of this right now. And you pour your heart into it, I'll pour my heart into it. We're unified. 
we're in different places right now and we're completely unified. We're all focused on the same thing right now. You see? It works. We're going to focus on this and it'll spread because we all breathe the same air. It'll go out, right? I don't know if you all know, but I there was a, an announcement that went out though, but we're not doing meditation uh, this week afterwards because um, we're doing a intuition one class afterwards. So, um, so that doesn't mean you don't meditate this month. <laughs> so I, uh, I wish you peace and your families. And I wish all those that uh, have disagreement with you or you with them, wish them peace too. Mm -hmm. So let us own together to remember that everything that we've did here today is unified with our owning. <clears throat> oh. through peace peace through unity be with you and your loved ones and all others <laughs> till we see each other again <laughs> <laughs>